November 14th, 1.30 a.m., the Meadowbrook, a typical roadhouse and gambling place on the outskirts of Center City. Dry up. Come on, get up against the wall there. Put him up. All right, sister, move back. All right, keep moving now. Over to the wall. Come on, you too, Grandpa. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> Don't move. <laughs> Helen, sit down. Victim, Helen Jennings, occupation housewife. Survivors, husband, and two children. The bullet that killed Helen Jennings was sent to the FBI headquarters in Washington. Examined and catalogued in the National Ammunition File, where bullets from unsolved cases are kept for reference. It was soon to have a companion. Victim, Frank Malloy. Occupation, bank guard. Survivors, wife and three children. Cause of death, shot while trying to prevent a bank robbery. Two murders within five days in the same city. Investigation was already underway when Ralph Demery, chairman of the police advisory board, arrived. He conferred with Chief of Police Bernard Harmitz, Lieutenant Paul Stoller of the Homicide Squad, and Richard Atkins of the FBI. The bullet that killed Frank Malloy, the bank guard, was forwarded to the FBI laboratory in Washington. A routine check of the barrel markings under a comparison microscope revealed it came from a Luger. The same Luger that had killed Helen Jennings. This bank robbery, a violation of a federal statute, gave the FBI jurisdiction to come in on the case. Mr. Hoover assigned it to Inspector George A. Briggs, one of the Bureau's top investigators. Together with a squad of special agents trained in handling bank robberies, Inspector Briggs proceeded to Center City, where he was met by Richard Atkins, special agent in charge of the FBI field office there. In a police lineup in Center City, a suspect named Robert Danker, picked up by the FBI, was identified by several bank clerks as the killer of Frank Malloy, and by David Jennings as the murderer of his wife. What time did you leave the Meadowbrook? Me, I was never in that clip joint. You're certain of that? Sure, I'm certain. That's your driver's license, isn't it? Yeah. That was found in the Meadowbrook right after Helen Jannings was murdered. You were there, weren't you? No. Your license was? That's the guy who swiped it out, got there. It's a frame. Who's framing you? Stu and in my line. I'll take care of him myself. Oh, come on, Bob. We're just trying to help you. Yeah, trying to help you, trying to pin a double murder rap on me. All right, then. Your license was stolen. Somebody framed you. But why shield him? Your best chance to clear yourself is to prove that you were framed. I'll prove it my own way when I get out. That may not be so easy. I'll take my chances. They don't look too good right now, Bob. You came into this town a month ago, a vagrant, with a police record. You admit being here the day the bank was robbed. But I didn't heist no bank. You claim you were never in the Meadowbrook, and yet your license was found there. I told you. Oh, you already got me strapped in the chair, so what's there to talk about? Well, let's talk about the license. If you didn't drop it, who did? I told you I was in Chicago that night. Have you any proof of that? Sure. I cut off my arm and buried it there for an alibi. All you gotta do is go dig it up. Talk like that isn't gonna help you, Danker. Wasn't there anybody who saw you? Look, it's a city. Nobody sees you in a city, do they, mister? Well, you're room clerk, landlady. I didn't have no room. I was busted all the time. Where'd you sleep that night? Under a new building going up, one near the freight yard. Where'd you get this, Bob? That ain't blood. That's red paint off a girder. Yeah, red paint in the cellar of that building where I hold up. All right, Bob. It's paint, I tell you. We'll send you some other clothes in the meantime. Get those off. Have his clothes and his shoes sent in right away. We'll book him on suspicion of robbery. At the FBI laboratory in Washington, 
A microscopic examination and chemical analysis was made of the smudge on Danker's coat. Exposed to the spectrograph, the smudge was broken down into its component parts and photographed. The densitometer concluded the examination, and the results were immediately forwarded to Inspector Briggs. The chief in? Yes, sir. He's expecting him. Inspector Briggs is on his way in, sir. Lieutenant Stoller, Inspector Briggs is here. Hello, Inspector. Hello, oh, Paul. Now, what's the score? Now, Danker's innocent. No. Our laboratory definitely places him in Chicago at the time the Jennings girl was murdered at the Meadowbrook. Well. See, that girder was painted at 5.30 on the afternoon of the murder. It was quick drying stuff from six to eight hours. The paint penetrated his coat just enough to show that it was almost dry at the time that Danker rubbed against it. Huh. What do you know? Which puts him in Chicago between 1 and 2 a.m., around the time the Jennings girl was killed. His presence in Chicago conclusively established by further laboratory examinations. Oh, yeah, looks like the kid was framed okay. Seems to be very little doubt about it. Now, if we can get him to talk about that chauffeur's license. Wish I could be in your session with Danker, but I've got to run along. Send in. Yes, sir. Looks like he's been released, sir. Release? Before I came on duty. Oh, here it is. Bail furnished by the personal bonding company. Just across the street. Mr. Smith? Never met him before in all my life. Wouldn't know him if I saw him again. Any address? Yeah, but I think you'll find it's a phony like the name. They all do it. Hotel Conlon. Never heard of it. Uh -huh. Thanks, anyway. Anytime. Danker was framed. We investigate and prove his alibi. But before anybody knows that except us, he's bailed out. That can only mean one thing. Somebody wants to see him as badly as we do. That night at 20 minutes past 11, a body with numerous knife wounds was found on the main highway leading to Center City. It was identified as Robert Danker. My man, I have a good man for you to look over. Just the qualifications you need. Defending against a knife attack, gentlemen, is a very dangerous proposition. It should be avoided. That's Cordell with the instructor. Been in the field two years. He's back for in-service training. Closing in on a hijacker when he suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Haynes. Not at all. Cordell, this is a test of your reactions. Here are photographs of four armed killers. Study them carefully. Look upon them as living people, armed and dangerous. Got it? Yes, sir. Thank you, Woody. Are there any questions? No, sir. Go to the starting point and go without further command. That's 
good, always take cover when you're outnumbered. Reload and holster. Start walking. Well, why didn't you shoot? Because he wants to surrender. We wouldn't shoot a man in cold blood. Reholster, don't walk. Why did you shoot the man on the left first? Already had his gun drawn. Reholster and start walking. Why didn't you shoot? He's using an innocent person as a shield. Reholster. Resume walking. Cordell's fine. He's a good choice, Hank. Send him over to my office first thing in the morning. Certainly, Mr. Briggs. Now then, the bank robbery and both the murders. Mr. Gordon. Hello, Sy. Mr. Briggs. I don't think you know Gene Cordell. No, I don't believe I do. How are you, Gene? Sy, it's good to see you again. Do I know him? I brought him into the Bureau. Taught him to shoot at the right target. Kept him from being a wealthy lawyer. I was just telling Gene, Sy already knows the case. The same gang that pulled a bank robbery also pulled a Meadowbrook job. That's when they framed Danker. Now, we know that Danker's hangout was right here in this section. Skid Row. Here, we have it over here. Here's Dock Street. Here's where he lived, at the Royal. These are the various pool rooms and dives that he was known to hang out in. There's a Dock Street gym. We know gangsterism is returning. Since the war, at least a half a dozen gangs have sprung up in that area alone. The juvenile delinquents of yesterday. All of them more clever, more ruthless than the old-time mobs. And as I say, we're convinced that one of those new gangs is responsible for the murders of Malloy, the Jannings girl, and Danker. Solve any one of those three murders, we'll have the gang we're after. Gene, you're going to follow in Danker's steps. Sai, as I explained, you're to surveil him every minute. Gene's only communication, unless otherwise directed, is going to be through you. I understand. Sai will be living right across the street, at the Gilbert. This tanker was a tough kid that knew his way around. You ought to be his carbon copy. Right, sir. Now, this is our plan. Suppose you were to drift into Santa City.
In the days that followed, Special Agent Eugene Cordell, using the cover name of George Manley, made himself known throughout the Skid Row area. Once more, so I'm only trying to help you, boy. He can use a little sharpening up. Throw him out of here. I know. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Lay off. Maybe you could show the kid a couple of things. Could be. I'll give you five bucks for every round you go. Make it ten. You've got a deal. Okay. Get the uh, champ some gear. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> a pleasure. Who's a big money man? Gonna pay me off. It's Alec himself. Come again? Alex Stiles, he only owns this joint, that's all. You better give him his buck's worth. I wouldn't worry about that. You any good? Good enough. Who'd you have a fight? I've been hit by the best. <laughs> you think you could maybe uh, last around? Take a little bet on it. Wait a minute. Hey, Punchy. Come here. Hmm? Yeah, you. Here, spread this. Take 20 to 1, Javino don't knock him out from the first. 20 to 1, he lasts around. You got it? 20 to 1? 20 to 1. 20 to 1. 
You last, I'll cut you in. You better not take a dive. Sparring with Kid Javino. What's your name? Just call me uh, Kid Dynamite. Kid Dynamite. Kid. Dynamite! Dynamite. Get in there and take the conceit out of that guy. Drill boy, man. You gotta take off. Get chin down. Let the pie.
think I got a lead. Yeah. At the gym. Somebody went through my wallet. Stole my social security card. What's your name, fella? What's it to you? Come on, let's have it. Manley. George Manley? Yeah. You're under arrest. What for? Suspicion of robbery. What are you kidding? I ain't robbed nothing. Next time you break into a jewelry store, don't leave your social security card. Cordell's social security card planted in a robbed jewelry store, coupled with his arrest, was the first indication that the Bureau's plan was meeting with success. For if the plan were working, as apparently it was, then Cordell indeed was walking in Danker's shoes. Relax. Relax. Okay. On January 4th, a routine request, one of approximately 26,000 received daily by the FBI, came into the identification division from the police department of Center City. It asked for the complete record of George Manley. A search of the name index failed to reveal any record on George Manley. His classification was then obtained and checked through 107 million fingerprints on file. Of those cards having the same general classification, the sorting machine rejected all but one possibility. This was then traced to the criminal fingerprint files, which identified George Manley as being Eugene Cordell, a special agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. It was brought to the immediate attention of the assistant director in charge of the identification division. He and Inspector Briggs had anticipated this request for the criminal record of George Manley as a result of Agent Cordell's arrest. To prevent Cordell's exposure, a false record had been prepared. This was now forwarded through routine channels to the police department of Center City. The following day in Center City, a bail bond was put up for the release of George Manley by a Mr. John Smith. Once more, the pattern was repeating itself. What had happened to Danker was happening to Agent Cordell, step by step. Joint. Oh. 
Okay. I'll bet ten. So one of you guys don't win on yourself once in a while. Here, take this one. Oh, I'm out. When's somebody gonna give me a hand? Oh, oh stop crying. I'll call that ten and I'll bump you ten. Well, you're you're not not, will you? Well, I'm not. What is it? Twenty yeah, well, money. Yeah, thanks. Now, Ray. Three ladies, huh? Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> and I was going to shoot the works with three jacks. You see? <laughs> Papa, Dad. Here's my job. Here you are, honey. How about giving me a little kiss, huh? Do you mind your breathing down my neck? My affectionate husband. Who opened that window? Well, not me. Think I'd open a window with you in the room? Fresh air, nuts. You open that window again, I'll throw you out of it. Good man. <laughs> well, answer it. Well, what do you think I was gonna do? Oh, hi, Maddie. Judy, I want you to get acquainted with Miss Laval. Oh. <laughs> hiya, fellas. Oh, hiya. Oh, hiya. 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 I want you all to be introduced to Miss Valentine Laval, the actress. Hiya. 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 Why don't we here meet Alec? Alec, this is Valentine Laval in person. Delighted, I'm sure. How you like, boss? Some class. Where'd she get that coat? A present from her Uncle Matty. Come out here, Uncle Matty. Does that dame know where the coat came from? Of course not, boss. You know I don't tell dames nothing. Just like you say, never trust a dame. And dopes. You know that coat's hot. Do you want to lead the cops right to us? Boy, I told you never to buy anything from a fence. Yeah, but you now take off. And ditch that coat before she tells the cops where she got it. Uncle Maddie. I'll take it. Make up your mind. Hello, Georgie. Hi. What? Come on in here where it's private. Hiya, champ. Jimmy, I want you to meet Did me. Did you say something? No, boss, I didn't say nothing. Hello. What's wrong for now? Sit down. Well, Georgie. What's your racket? What's yours? Sweet job you pulled in Pittsburgh. Smart. No conviction. Never been in Pittsburgh. No. How about San Diego, April 46? Suspicion of armed robbery. No conviction. You got me crossed. How about Philly, last December? Grand larceny. No conviction. Miami, Richmond, Trenton. No convictions. What you selling? Yeah. Take a look at this. Direct from the FBI. Or, uh, should I say indirect? Through my pipeline. In the police department. Sorry about the weekend I gave you, Georgie. But you see, I'm building an organization along scientific lines. I need men who know their way around, who can get by. That's why I screened you. Screened? Sure, like in the Army. Only I picked my own recruits. You see, it works like this. I spot a guy who looks good. So what do I do? I get him framed. The cops check his record through the FBI. Then I get it. It's my idea. Takes connections. 
what I've got there. Should be back in the police files, huh? It'll get back. Same way it got out. Convinced? Not bad. Coming in, Georgie? my hearing. It's for short in court Friday. It'll be fixed. Forget it. And there's one thing you'd better get straight. There's just one idea, man, in this outfit. Me. I do the thinking. I give the orders. That's okay by me, boss. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna like you, Georgie. You catch on fast. Here. Buy yourself a closet full of clothes. I like my boys to look sharp. Run the other room's chilly. Well, it be? Coffee and? Out of donuts. Okay, give me some pie. Out of pie. Toast. You won't get an argument out of me, honey. Toast. Hamburger. With? Everything. Say, miss, when's the next ferry? Every hour and a half hour. Ain't that Georgie? Yeah. see you again, Mr. Briggs. I flew in from Washington tonight. Cordell's report convinced Inspector Briggs that the Stiles gang was the one they were after. Now it was imperative to secure concrete evidence to obtain a conviction and to ferret out who in the police department was making the Bureau's records available to the gang. Upon concluding his report, Special Agent Cordell returned to Center City.
Out kind of late, ain't you? What's the idea? Where you been, Georgie? I took a ferry across the river. What for? What's it to you? What business you got across the river? I said, what's it to you? You don't take no ferry boat rides in the middle of the night for your health. What did you pull? You got a long nose. Why don't you keep it to yourself? From now on, you ain't got no business that ain't Alex. What do you think this is, a penny stick-up outfit? You mean I gotta share my special numbers with you, Muggs? What's the matter with the dames on this side of the river? Got a red queen on a red king. Everybody got it? Got gotcha. it. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Now play it back, just like it's going to be. At 25 after 10, I drive up with you to the gate. You're in the back seat, all dressed up in a monkey suit. <laughs> Get on with it. Well, the guard takes us for one of the invited characters, so he lets us in. And once through the gate, I get out of the car and boing, rock him to sleep. Okay, come on, come on. I pull in car two and keep the motor running. Same here in car number three. Just as you pull in, I'm cutting the wires to the switch box. And I start whistling. <whistles> when Whitey whistles, me and Muck get out of the car, go in the kitchen. I stand by and keep the motor running. 10.30, Monk, Georgie, me and you, we're going in through the front. We head for the banquet room. I make them line up, face the right and left walls. I cover them. Are you with us or some dame? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I'm right with you, boss. You keep that head of yours where it belongs or some cop will blow it off, pretty boy. You ain't kidding. Nobody asked you. All right. We head for the banquet room. I make them line up, face the right and left wall. I cover. I take them on the left wall, work them over for whatever they got. Diddle for them on the right wall. All right. Now for the getaway. Shivy and me, we carry the junk out. I cover you. Right. I head north on Highway 7. And we meet back here. Any questions? No. no. Okay, Whitey, Nick, Mutt. Swipe three cars, bring them around back of the gym. Uh-huh. Uh, we take off at 10 sharp. Right. 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 Mutt, pick me out a little soon, will you? No, I'll kill you. Where are we going to eat? I don't know. Try that. Yeah, that's close by. Hey, uh, Nick, what are you picking up here for? Rich parking lot. Stay out. Nice going, General. What's the use of having a war if you don't learn from it? Hiya, fellas. Hello, Hello. 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 Okay, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, come on. Yeah. Come on. Hey, you like like I'll be right, right down. Like Why don't you let them stick around here and clean up this mess? Looks like they've been raised in a trough. Well, if the maid were here, she'd really blow her top. Oh, the Willard Mansion, huh? You know, I read what they got gold faucets in every bathroom. Gee, they must creep with money. I heard Mrs. Willard had a... Didn't I tell you never to poke your nose in it out? Who do you think you're shoving around? One of you dumb lugs? I don't take it. Don't you touch me. You open your trap. And I will. You ever touch me again, I swear I will. Shut up. I hope they get you tonight. Yeah, I hope they do for me.
couldn't do with that bus when I ain't working. Snap it up, boys. Boss will be down in a minute. Hey, champ. Get a load of this. Okay. Cars one and four will cover the highway. Jeff's station will be at the roadblock. That's it, men. Okay. Rifle three one eight four. Shotgun three two seven four. Rifle, 204.92. Inspector, Lieutenant, I got away as soon as I could, Chief. I'm glad you let me in on it. You wanted me to keep you posted. Well, sir. Pick yourself a boom-boom. Or a honey of a luga. Lay off. That's a bosses. You got another one? Make it okay, Inspector. Time to spare. Take the bridge route. We'll go by way of Agnes Avenue. We'll go in Demery's car. All right, answer it, can't you? Okay, boss. Close it up. <laughs> Who sneezed? That wasn't a sneeze, boss. It was just a sort of a cough. Yeah? He's busy. Okay, hang on. I sure hope there's a big crown. I can read it. Hey, you gotta step on it. Better get going, boss. It's off. What do you mean it's off? Dump those cars and turn in your guns. All of you, beat it. This is Briggs calling WFBI. Come in, WFBI. This is WFBI, Mr. Briggs. Stand by for a direct message from Blanket. Go ahead, Blanket. This is Blanket. Received urgent message from G. Family will not appear. Plans canceled. Family warned you were waiting. 
tanks. Stand by. They're not going to show. How come? I'm sorry, Chief. It looks like they decided not to show up. Well, it's only quarter after now. No, I got a message. They won't be here. What do you suppose happened? I wish I knew. Stop it! Tipped the cops, didn't you? No, no! I didn't! Honest, I didn't! Alec, no! I swear to me! You tipped them! Alec! Tipped the cops, didn't you? No! I didn't! You tipped them! You tipped them! Good to get out of that show with us, Alfred. Hey, Pfizer, double for me. Okay, Mary. What are you guys going to have? Straight bourbon. I'll take the same. Bourbon. Did you ditch the cars? What do you think? Any idea why the boss blew the deal? Now, what's your guess, champ? I pass. I think that you'll pass, too. How about a little game of poker? Good idea. Okay, Ronnie. See you, guys. What's the rest, Georgie? I got a date. Same here. Cross the river. So long, fellas. So long. Oh, man. Hey, how about coming up to my place, huh? Sure. That's a good idea. So long, Uncle Matty. Hi, <laughs> hey, Matty. Good pickings, champ.
This is Styles. I'm coming out to see you. No, now. Now, what is it that couldn't wait until tomorrow morning? That tip-off. Where did it come from? The FBI. Lucky for you, I was around. Take my advice, Styles. Lay low for a while. They've got nothing on me. But maybe I've got something on them. What do you mean? This gun. Somebody just broke into my arsenal, shot it off. What for? What do you think? Bright boys. I'm trying to match it up with a couple of souvenirs I left in the Meadowbrook in the bank job. Bright boys. Thinking only they can play at being cops. You get the fingerprints off this gun. The way I figure it, maybe the same rat who tipped them shot it off. Hmm. Any ideas? Yeah. Eight. It's got to be somebody in my outfit. Nobody else knew where that arsenal was hidden. You better get it out of there quick. I'm way ahead of you. When do I get the dope on this? It may take a little time. I'll call you. All right. Call me at my house. And hurry it up. Don't want that gun out of your sight. Just a minute, Styles. Cordell sent him. Oh, hello, Frank. Get me Gordon, will you? Yeah, it looks all right. Get it off to Washington on the first plane. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Briggs. What's the latest on Gene? He went to usual place at 10. Still there. Everything quiet. Okay. Yeah. 
Come on. Come on. He's sure burning. Yeah, you're not kidding. Come on, to you. Oh, boss. Say, boss, what happened last night? A little change of plans. I sure could have used that basket of lettuce. That blonde of mine. I'm yeah. sick of you Hang and on. your dames. Hey, boss. Home for you. Yeah? Do you know a fighter by the name of George Manley? Yeah. You shouldn't. I'll see that he gets your message. You're in or out? What about that package? I'm with you. Okay. Pieces. Okay, meet me at four, uh, same place. Too rich, I mean. Now you win the deal. Well, I win something. Manly. Tonight. Keep him on tap. Check. for this, Mr. Derry. Yes, sir. I'm gonna vote you a great big bonus. Where's it coming from? With a stoolie in your outfit, they've got you stopped dead. All we've got to do is chop this stoolie and we're in business again. You don't know when to stop, do you, Styles? Slot machines, gambling rackets, that wasn't enough. No, you have to take on a bank. I didn't see you turn down your cut of the bonds and stuff. Killing a guard, then following it up with a couple more murders. Making things tougher all around. Well, go ahead. Kill Manley. Give the FBI an engraved invitation to put you in the chair. Dead men make bad witnesses. Hmm. And who said I was going to kill him? <laughs> now, that's where you come in, Mr. Demery. You're out of your mind. You know what? You're going to be a big hero tomorrow. Yes, sir, your name will be all over the front page. Demery gets armed robber. Mayor's little man wins big police medal. If you think you can mix me, Alex, Mr. Demery, your hands will be clean. The cops will do the killing. Let me know when you start talking sense. I'm talking it now. Now, listen, Stiles. I kicked in plenty when I didn't need you. Always around for the payoff, weren't you? Well, you're sticking around for this payoff. Sit down. Go on, sit. We've got a big job to do tonight. Now, here's where you come in. Chief. Just caught me, Inspector. Hello, Dick. Chief, what's on your mind? A little package of dynamite. Well, exploded. I'd like to read you a report. By one of our agents. At 12.19, Alex Stiles left the rear entrance of the Dock Street gym. He entered car and proceeded to Milford and Oak Streets. He parked car and walked to 1680 Oak Street. He was admitted by person unknown at 12.30 a.m. He left at 12.50 a.m. Do you happen to know who lives at 1680 Oak Street? No. Ralph Demery. What? Were you with Demery all the time last night after he arrived here, just before he went on the raid? Yes, yes, I'm sure I was. No, wait. Oh, I remember. He went to his office for a few minutes. At 9.55 last night, Stiles received a phone call. Subsequently, the Willard job was called off. Well? All the facts seem to add up. Demery's financial status, his bank deposits, his bond purchases, roughly 20 times in excess of his salary. 
I just can't believe that Demery is mixed up in this mess. All right, perhaps this will convince you. Our Washington Identification Division shows requests from your police department for the records of all these men. All of them members of the Stiles gang. Now, these records supplied by us were then made available to Stiles, and he used them to check on prospective gang members. Is Brian still there? Have him come in. Try and run a police department with stuff like this going on. Yes, sir. Hello, Sam. This is Inspector Briggs of the FBI, Sergeant Bryan. How do you do, sir? Sergeant. You know Mr. Atkins. I sure do. Hello, dear. Sam. Ever had a request from anyone here for the records of these men? I get so many requests, sir. Let me see. Yes, here's one I checked on today. George Manley. Today? Yes, sir. I lifted one of his latent fingerprints off a gun. Was that gun a Luger? That's right. Who asked you to check it? Mr. Demery. Mr. Demery? Yes, sir. Were Manley's the only fingerprints that you lifted from that gun? No, there were also a couple of fragmentary prints. I identified them as Alex Stiles. Thanks, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Oh, Sergeant, have you got the serial number of that Luger? Yes, sir. Thanks. Line, please. This is Mr. Briggs. Get me the radio room. Radio room? Get me Gordon. Yes, sir. WFBI calling number six. WFBI calling number six. Number six. Stand by, number six. Go ahead, Mr. Briggs. Briggs speaking. Tell Cordell to get out immediately. The gang has made him. He's in great danger. Cordell's one of our agents. He's been doing undercover work in the Stiles gang under the name of George Manley. I see. That certainly ties Demery in all right. What do you want me to do? For the moment, nothing. We'd better get back to the office. We're expecting word from Washington. They may give us the green light to move in on the Stiles gang. Why don't you come with us? I want to. Good. And if you don't mind, I'd like to take Lieutenant Storer along, too. We'll pick him up on the way out. Right. Let me talk to George Manley, please. Who? Tied up. Dames, something classy? He says he's tied up. What's the deal? Oh, the boss. Give us a load on when we get there. Yeah, it came up sudden like. Take it easy, champ. Relax. Boss knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Demery. Is Chief Hamets in? No, sir. Get the night detail together. I just got a tip about a robbery. Yes, sir. Great test bullet from Lewis, 7.65 millimeter. Barrel markings identical with murder bullets removed from victims Frank Malloy and Helen Jenny. Arrest Styles, Gang, and Demery. Give me. Good work. Dick, get three squads ready. Right. around the side. Straight ahead, Georgie. Where's the nearest telephone? I don't know, but there's a gas station up the road. Maybe they got one. Okay. Get there as quick as you can. Call the FBI and ask for Inspector Briggs. Inspector Briggs? Yeah. Tell him that Gordon followed Cordell and two of the gang to the Anderson Manufacturing Company. Cordell? Gordon followed Cordell and two of the gang to the Anderson Manufacturing Company. You got it? Yes, sir. Okay. What's your number? A371. All right. I'm counting on you. Yes, sir. Now step on it. I wasn't trying to steal nothing, honestly. I was just trying to find a place to park the bones for the night. Well, park them someplace else. Go on, beat it. Thanks. Wait a minute. Get him up. Get him up. Georgie. Hello, boss. What's up? Sweet job. FBI, I want to speak to Inspector Briggs. I have a message from Gordon. Yes. Yes, what's the message? Just a minute. Anderson Manufacturing Company. Razor. Very much. There's a message from Gordon. He's tailed Cordell and two of the gang to the Anderson Manufacturing Company. That's out on Fraser Road. At Karen. Dick, our group will take the Anderson plant. Maury, your squad will handle the gym. Okay. Parker, you pick up Demery. Yes, sir. If you don't mind, Stoller and I like to go along with Parker. Try and keep us away. All right. Let's go. Good enough. Let's go, fellas. Pull this one out of the air, Georgie. Yeah? Yeah. Left 18. Easiest way to crack a safe, use a combination. No noise.
watchman. Guard. Okay. Go ahead, take it. It's all yours. No cuts for anybody. Go ahead. And this is one job that'll never get tipped off. Will it, Georgie? I don't get you, boss. You don't? Huh? Well, haven't you heard? Somebody did a little singing to the FBI. Told them things. Like where I kept my gun when we were going to pull the Willard job. Now, who would know all that but somebody in our outfit? Huh? Yeah, Georgie, we picked up a pigeon. Now, you're a smart guy. Suppose you were me. Suppose you were running this outfit. How would you get rid of it? You don't know. Well, there are lots of ways, sure. You could knock him off with a gun. Chevy could knife him. One of the boys could drop him in the river. But that wouldn't be clever, would it, Ned? The FBI would be crawling all over you. They'd keep getting in your way until they got you. Right, Georgie? No, there's only one scientific way to get rid of this stoolie. Let the cops bump him off. <laughs> Smart, huh? You see, Georgie, any minute now, a squad of cops will be coming up the front way. And guess whose shadow they're gonna see on that window? And guess who they're gonna pump full of slugs, thinking they're knocking off a safe crack? And who do you suppose is bringing the cops? My number one connection in the police department in Georgie. He's leaving that way clear for us. Oh. Not in the face. Don't mark him up. Here they are. What's up, Sergeant? Robbery. Cashier's office on the second floor.
Let her have it. You all right, Gene? Okay, how's it going? Bad wound, but he'll be okay. Well, Inspector, I didn't expect to find the FBI here. We got a tip on a robbery. We got a tip, too. Oh, is that so? Yes, from one of our agents here. Mr. Demery, I'd like to have you meet George Manley. How's it, Sally? Are you all right, sir? Me? Hold right, I'll trust you. 